Okay, folks, Tom here from Whistle Thicket. I've been making some apple cider for the first time with this old antique press that needs some work. I'm gonna have to work on it for next year. Uh, but we made some cider. I'm gonna make some more in a minute. And then with the leftover pomace, I soaked it in water overnight and I did a second, a second pressing and that's called Ciderkin. And my son really loves it. He's two. The cider was a little, bit too strong for him he didn't enjoy that as much but cider can is basically kind of uh apple juice right it's just a little watered down uh but it's a perfect treat for him and what we're gonna do with this leftover pomace some of it i'm gonna feed to our pigs and our goats and horses for a little treat and our turkeys and our chickens but with the other bag of pomace we're making apple cider vinegar and it's so easy and I really love this whole cider pressing because there's so many products I can make from it. So let's go ahead. We're going to feed the pigs and then we're going to make some cider vinegar. Okay, so I got another uh, half gallon or so um, for my cider press. I think next year I'll do a better job when I do some improvements to the press. But this leftover pomace, this is just apple scraps, people. I bet I could probably get more juice out of it. I just got to work on that machine. But we're just using these leftover apples, honey, and some of my local uh, water from my house here, just well water, but it's really good water, North Carolina water. Um, so I'm using honey instead of sugar. Um, if you don't have honey available, I'm a beekeeper, so I'm rich in honey. Uh, probably, if I wasn't a beekeeper, I probably would just use raw sugar. Uh, but I got tons of honey, so I like to substitute sugar when I can with the honey. So really, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put maybe about uh, one cup of honey in each mason jar. Then I'm going to fill up close to the top, maybe three-fourths with this uh, apple waste here, the apple pumice. Then I'm just going to fill it up with water, and that's our first step. Okay, my next step here, you want to put the mason jar lids back on and you want to shake, shake, shake. You want to really mix up that honey and that water. And I did leave a little bit of room so that it would mix better. So I need to shake up every single one of these. And then we have one more important step for the prep. That if you don't do this last step, you're not going to be happy because uh, this will go boom, boom. Okay, folks, so one more crucial step for the uh, setup of, of this table scrap vinegar. I may have said apple cider vinegar. That's a little bit different. That's using uh, cider to make the vinegar, but that to me seemed like a waste of uh, good cider, especially I only got about two gallons of it. I'm going to probably have more... Uh, scrap vinegar than I will cider. Um, this is real important. I went ahead and I filled it up the rest of the way with water, not to the top, but to where the lid goes. And then you replace the canning lid um, with either some light fabric or I just use a couple layers of cheesecloth. That's really important because the yeast that's on the skin of the apple 
uh, the natural yeast is going to start a ferment. The honey is going to give it a kickstart and is going to be um, getting rid of gases, carbon dioxide. Um, and if you don't put a breathable top on, it's going to pop and that's not going to be good. Um, I guess if you didn't do this, I guess you could burp it every couple days. But this is what I'm doing. Um, this is going to be about a six week process. So it's not a slow or a quick process. So this is going to start bubbling in the next couple days, hopefully. I swear I can already see bubbles in a couple of them, but I'm not going to say for sure. I mean, I see bubbles, but you know. Um, so after about two weeks, it should end its initial ferment. I'm going to strain the apples out. And then what's left, that liquid is going to be what's going to become my vinegar. And I'm going to let it ferment for another two to four weeks. So when you make the vinegar, you want to make twice as many bottles as, as what you want to get in the end. Because even though this is a half gallon, this is not going to give me a half gallon of vinegar. It's probably going to be half of that because the apples are going to be taken out. For me, I'm going to feed them to my chickens and my pigs and my goats. For you, you may uh, compost them. So hopefully this has been a good video for you. I'm gonna keep you updated um, with my vinegar process and hopefully it'll be successful.